Cheese here, and today we are going to discuss how to tune a NASCAR in Forza 7. So, let's get to it. For those of you that are wondering, yes, I designed that paint scheme. It is uh, kind of my own little design, Pepsi number 24, I call it the Freedom Car. But anyway, let's get back to it, gents and ladies. So, once again, NASCAR tuning. So, real simple. So what you're going to do is uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go to our cars. We'll go to tuning and upgrades. Okay, so a quick message for this. If, for those of you that want to do leaderboards, okay, you are not going to be able to do leaderboards like we used to. You cannot tune your car up to 900 and stay in the NASCAR division. You have to stay in 833. So what that means, no upgrades. No upgrades for the 833. Okay, you can only tune it. All right, so I'm just throwing that out there. All right, you can still throw upgrades, you guys, this car, but you're not going to be able to stay in the NASCAR division. They made the NASCAR division kind of stock, only with tunes. Anyway, without further ado, once you get ready to do it, let's go to tuning, and let's check it out. All right, guys, everything's pretty simple. Basically the same as Forza 6. Really no differences that I've seen. So let's just get to it. Let's go ahead and bring up the information thing. So all cars handling acceleration and braking must travel through the tires to reach the road. Tire pressure is an effective way to adjust peak grip, responsiveness, and wear. Test the pressure change in small increments because one or two PSI can make a big difference in grip. Excessive high tire pressures will adversely affect the contact area of the tire, the road and overall friction of the tires, low tire pressure, ridiculous overall responsiveness, while high tire pressure can result in skittish handling. It is best to fine tune the tire pressures after a few laps since the tires will heat up during a race, making it air and side expand, increasing the pressure. Front to rear balance is important too. Heavier braking puts more pressure and heat into the front tire. So try to balance each one out per track. All right, guys, so that is pretty much what the help says about the tires. I agree with it. I have not really noticing anything different on that in terms of Forza 6 to Forza 7. But to be safe, keep your tire pressures at 30 until you are comfortable enough to figure out how to tune those tires. Okay, 30 is a really good threshold. I honestly barely, rarely go anywhere else on my own. Gary, guys, this is real simple. I'm going to explain this out. We don't need the assistance. Final drive, guys, you got a left or a right. You want speed, you want acceleration. Key note. Your car will max out at a certain point, so you can't just keep going to speed and expecting that you're going to keep getting speed. All right, each car has a threshold. Once you reach that threshold, if anything, you'll start to hurt your car's top speed because your gears will be too low. They won't be able to get there, so find the right threshold. Final drive is kind of your own preference because you can make gears move, all right, uh, individually. If you like fast turning tracks, uh, lots of turns, not that many straightaways, then you're going to go ahead and have, have a higher gear differential so if you watch on the bottom left is my gearing box see how that bar is going to the left that's what happens when you increase higher uh, differentials okay when you go higher differentials you don't go as fast in that gear you just accelerate quicker in that gear so you're gonna have to change the gear really quick okay so you want to find the balance if you're gonna go to like somewhere like Daytona or Homestead you want to drag these off and make a longer ones okay so make sure you guys stay really really cognizant of how you do your gears because I'm going to tell you the truth guys your gears are almost the, like everything in a car if you don't have good gears you're going to get out outgunned in terms of speed and outgunned in terms of acceleration okay so this is the power this is what makes our car go around so we need to make sure our gears are good okay all right next is your tires we're looking at cambers toes and front casters your cambers are really simple guys okay this is where your angles are going to make contact to the track this is what's going to give you that peak grip opportunity so you need to play with this in order to figure out what you want okay so we'll go camera refers to the angle of the tires relative to the ground adjusting camera affects grip in a balance between cornering and straight line as a car corners the area tire contact to the ground is distorted by adjusting camber the driver can correct the distortion and prove cornering however peak braking acceleration occurs zero camber with the tire straight up start with one of these degrees negative from a rear then tune your car for peak values later. So what you got to do from there is figure that out, and you guys will be good to go. As far as your toes, guys, your toes are going to help your cars in terms of turning in response and cornering grip. Okay, so if you want a car to react quickly in terms of sensitivity while you turn left and right, then you're going to go ahead and use these adjustments right here. Okay, so if you want the car to turn in, you're going to go positive. So you're going to go toe out. Toe out will give you that positive quick uh, quick turn in, but it's going to decrease your stability. If you go negative 
on the tow. You're going to make the car a little more sluggish in terms of turning in, and then you're also gaining corner and grip, though. So you're going to have stability in the turn, so you're not going to break loose as easy. Okay. Same thing goes for the rear. As far as your casters, your casters will actually is more of a multiplier for your cameras and your toes. Okay. So I don't really mess with the casters too much, but if you start going to like ovals and high bank tracks or a lot of tracks that have a lot of angles, then I would go ahead and start messing with that. Kind of deal with this on your own basis. Do what you feel is good for you. Any roll bars, guys, in terms of NASCARs, this is similar to our track bar or our sway bars, okay? That's pretty much where these go. What any roll bars do is keep the cars from rolling too far to the right or too far to the left. So therefore, when you turn your car to the left, your body rolls to the right. When you're in your own car, the weight transfers over to the right. By doing this, what we're doing with the front roll bar here is when we're under braking is when the roll bar is most effective. It allows the car to not overload too far to the left or too far to the right. That is very key in terms of maximum grip and making the car turn because if you overload a side too much you're going to give way it's going to get too much weight and the tire is going to break and you're not going to get the grip that you want same thing with the rear guys but one thing that's cool about these two is the way you play them off together it's going to allow you to make the car looser or tighter so make sure you guys pull up these little hints here and it'll tell you everything to do. For example, if we decrease the anti front, the, the front anti roll stiffness, generally we'll reduce our understeer. Understeer, for those of you who don't know, is basically being tight. Okay, that's being tight in the car. So that understeer is tight, oversteer is loose. Okay? Springs, guys, springs are big too. It depends on what you want to do with your car. If you feel like the, you want a stiffer suspension, get over bumps a little easier. Um, be able to transfer weight left and right also better then go ahead and run a stiffer suspension for maximum grip purposes and being a little bit faster through corners especially quick left rights and chicanes and, and s turns and bus stops and such go ahead and lower those springs i'd say probably anywhere between five and upper no lower than 350 but 350 and up also note that the lower that you go in the springs the easier it is going to be to bottom out so you guys got to be careful because if you bottom out you're going to lose traction and you're going to crash Secondly, we're going to look at our right heights. Right heights are pretty big, guys. This will help you with cornering in terms of if you're going to go left, right, up, and down. Who knows? Anyway, hopefully you stay on the track. That's the key, right? If you increase the right height and you go up on the front, guys, it's going to increase your speed pretty good. You're going to be able to go a lot faster um, and whatnot. But in terms of coming to, to turns, you're going to have a hard time turning in turning into the turns okay so you're going to decrease your cornering at this rate so you want to find a good balance it's good to raise your ride heights especially if you're uh, if you're already bottoming out due to your springs the ride heights can maybe buy you a few inches but it's not always going to fix your problem so make sure you find the right threshold for one of them okay guys next rebounds bumps and stiffness so let me go ahead and define these up for you let's see the best practice set bump and rebound stiffness first then move rebound dampening okay so if you're going to use these guys always do the bump first and then do the rebounding lower the car rebounds damping setting until the cars transition harshly throughout tightens chicanes this slowly will raise the increase in transit movements smooth out if the front rebound dampening is set too high the front of the car will become skittish and understeer when quickly changing direction so guys this is what you use for when you really want to fine-tune the car when you're doing left and right turns personally I don't really touch this too much because I don't know I found the speed on my own uh, whether it's your driving skill or whatever I just am able to drive the car the way it is almost and get good results for some other people they might need this extra tuning so don't be scared to go in here and start playing with numbers. Just make sure that you save your data first, save it in increments, make a hard file, and then kind of work on it there. That way, if you make a mess of things, you can at least get back to where you started, okay? Downforce, guys. This is a big one, okay? This is gonna what's going to make you either fast or slower in terms of aerodynamics. So, long story short, if you go all the way to your right, it's cornering. Cornering allows the car to turn easier and maintain good stability. It keeps the car on the ground, basically giving you maximum grip in terms of downforce reasonings, okay? You can do that both in front and rear. If you go all the way to the left to speed, you're basically making the car not want to turn because you're planning on being on more straightaways than anything else so places like daytona homestead yeah uh downforce max speed would probably be a great idea compared to going to somewhere like Magello or suzuki or so forth you're going to want more cornering so we're not going to be seeing many straightaways so we don't need that extra speed also note this is how you can make a car tighter or looser so if you take the front tires or the excuse me not the front tires but the front downforce increase the front downforce to cornering take the rear downforce and lower that towards speed you can actually make a car really loose that way so this is another little way slash 
cheese, I guess, in a sense. Not even a cheese, guys. I don't even know why I said that. But you guys can use this to make your car looser or tighter, to be honest with you. Sometimes staggering it, having a higher uh, front cornering than a rear cornering is sometimes the best way to go in terms of getting the car to turn. All right. If you're able to tune your brakes in an 833 series, you're not going to have the brake option. Why? Because we don't have the brake upgrade. But if you put a brake upgrade, guys, it's really simple. You're going to have a couple of things to do. You're going to have your balance. The balance is going to whether you want the brakes to be more towards the front or towards the rear. So if you go towards the front, you're going to have more front grip, uh, front brake, which means the car is going to react in terms of braking a lot more. But you're not going to be able to turn the car as good because there's too much weight going into the front. That's where everything's starting to slow down. So, therefore, for some of us guys that run a lot of leaderboards and whatnot suggest that you run probably anywhere between 45 and 48% towards the rear. Okay, And what that does is put more brake pressure towards the rear, allowing less weight to be on the front of the car, allowing for those front tires to be able to turn and manipulate the car's direction a little better. Okay, Next is your braking pressure. Guys, this is really simple. This is a preference. If you like brakes to, to be able to mash them, then play with this. If you lower the brake pressure, you'll be able to mash your brakes. Okay, like mash them, pull out, trigger pull. Okay, if you want to have maximum responsiveness, then increase it. Personally, I run 200%. That way, I can outbrake people and get the car to still stop. Is it the best method? Maybe not. Maybe yes. Who knows? Everything's based off of you guys, based off of your driving style. That's what all a Forza is about, and that's the beauty thing, beautiful thing about Forza. Next thing, guys, is rear. Uh, what do you call it? Your rear differentials here. Basically, all this does is help you with your acceleration. So right now, it's set at a stock 41%. So basically, it's 41% of the maximum of torque uh, in pounds for that car to get going. What does that mean? Basically, it means that if I'm running with no traction control, I'm running at 41% of a maximum speed. So when I pull that trigger, 41% of the, the power is being applied, making it easier to control the car. If I were to take this and shoot it all the way up to 100, and I try to do the same thing, I am more likely going to spin the tires because now 100% of that torque is going into the tires right there and then. So now I really have to be sensitive on my trigger. Okay? Real simple, guys. This is basically tuning in a nutshell. Um, you can call it advanced. You can call it whatever you want. Long story short, guys, it's the same thing as Forza 6 for the most part. There really is no differences. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, or I missed something, or I, I might not uh, was, was not clear on something, please comment below in the box. Other than that, I hope you guys liked the video. Please share it with your friends. Once again, drop a like, especially if you if you enjoyed it. It helps me out, especially when we got to get these new videos going. Long story short, guys, hope you guys are doing well. More videos out to coming. Please also check out our Forza group on Facebook. It's called Forza Stock Car Racing Network. Once again, that's Forza Stock Car Racing Network. You can find us on Facebook. And be sure to follow us on Twitch as well at Forza Stock Car Racing. That's Forza Stock Car Racing. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, leave a like, and we'll catch you all later.